So now you're kicking in with the Yakuza and you so have I like go power? Everybody, everybody yeah. why, wherever I go, <laughs> why girls or the girls say, listen, Chino could get in that club, but no one could get into. Yeah. There'll be a line outside. Yeah. I roll up my boys. Ah, oh, Chino's son come right in. I, Chino's I don't son. Pay for shit. Holy I don't shit. Pay for Shit. I, I was like, the, you're a kid from Far Rockaway, Far Queens, Rockaway. Now I'm hanging out Japan, Okinawa with, it, with some yakuza. I, <laughs> and, and I'm not talking about like a young, like he was an older man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, so you somehow stumbled just, upon just a position of power, right? And prestige. But but that was for a short period of time. Okay. What because hard? Okay. I fucked up. How'd you fuck up? Talk about that. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> you're listening to the New York said podcast. This will be my greatest performance. Here we go. We came, we saw, we kicked it down. What year did you grow up in? Like, what are some of like your earliest memories, and what did New York look like at that time? Because I know you've seen a lot of change. Oh. Wait, when I started in the business or no, just no, no, as a kid, like oh, oh my, yeah, I like used let's to hang out, yeah, oh, well, yeah, yeah, like wh and, where are you from? You I'm, I mean? I'm from Far Rockaway, okay, Queens, but I was actually born in the Gowanus Projects okay. as a kid. Uh, uh, did a lot of moves, uh, but uh, I winded up putting my feet down in Far Rockaway, Queens. Okay, yeah, and what was it like growing up in the project? Oof. It was, you know what? My wife was from the Bronx. Yeah, <laughs> my wife was from the projects. You know. I, you know, we always say off on the pot. It's not really a project. It's funny because I grew up in a building called uh, on 2240 Mott Avenue, uh -huh. and Alex grew up across the building on 2230 Mott Avenue. So there were two buildings connected together. There was about six stories. So it wasn't like the project where you have 30 buildings or, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it like, was like Queensbridge. Right, but it was, but it was wall. for, you know, it was affordable housing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, that's what it was for Rockway. Uh, my first day, I got drop kicked. And that was like the, the 70s? Front lawn. Or that was, uh, I know, I actually moved to Far Rockaway is 70. Yes, yeah, 70. I was in the th second grade. So that's six, seven. Yeah. 76, 77. So what was New York like back then? Like, what were the people like? What was the, what was the neighborhood like? I tell you, in Far Rockaway, I remember as a kid, it was all the, in the summertime. It was, a, Far Rockaway was a summer community. It used to be where all the rich people Mm -hmm. They had the bungalows up on by the beach. Yeah, and there was no AC, so they would get these little bungalows to get away from the heat. When you're by the beach, you get air breeze and have all the bungalows. Yeah. So that area was mostly like Jewish, uh -huh. and it just started getting, it was, you know. Did it have like a beach feel? Because I mean, like, oh, we 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 lived in a beach. Yeah, because I we, used we to, lived in a beach. I grew up on in Southside Jamaica, Queens, and we would take this long bus ride all the way to Far Rockaway. Yeah, oh, oh and it, yeah. It seemed like it would take forever because you just want to be on yeah, the bottom water. Yeah, I, we we used to walk to the beach. The beach was where everyone met at. Everyone in the summertime was like, "Where are you going? We're going Seventeenth Street." And 17th Street is where you drank your 40, you yeah. smoked your blunts, yeah. you know, you made out with the first girl, you're hanging out at night. <laughs> the summers never, I said as a kid, to now, life goes by like this as an adult, as a kid, it felt like it never ended. Like yeah. summer felt like a year. It felt like a movie. Yeah, it was like, and you just, and you always had things to do. Like when and you say things to do, like give me like, what were you doing? Like we had no money. No money at all. I'm talking about this zero. But I'm you had the beach. But we had the beach. And, you know, we, we had each other. But at, at, at a young age, you're, you're young. So you're, you're, I'm getting to know people. And, and like and that's how I met Alex this way. So you get your little crew. Yeah. As an eight-year-old, you know, you get your crew. You went to school. Yeah. And then you're growing up. But then you start seeing the adults. This is 70s. This was a... This was a tough time. Like, uh, it was still racial. Like, the high or the junior high school was like... It was still like... It was like, it was the black and Hispanics, and it was the white people, mm -hmm. you know? And and you kind of knew if they were like, you know, bougie white people, or they were like, you know, white people just like us. They were like, you know, poor, pouring out, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't bad, because I remember the ladies, the old ladies in the building used to, they used to bring their lawn chairs out in front of the building, because it's summertime. So they bring their lawn chairs, and all the old ladies are sitting in front of the building. You know, with their legs crossed, conversating. And right. these are old Jewish ladies, you know. Yeah. And my mother would uh, sometimes feed some of these old ladies because they had no money, you know, yep. food. But it was, it, it was the best experience of my life. And I say that as growing up as a child because your childhood, that's where everything in your whole life begins. And you, you, whatever happened in your childhood, you're going to bring with you as an adult. So, like, what is something that you remember from your childhood? Like, what was, say, like, what was 
something that you got in trouble? Like, what was you got in oh trouble for as a kid? God. Uh, you know what? I was never really a, a person that used to get in trouble. People always say that. But you they know, always I, have a story. I never was. I was, I was bad. Yeah. Uh, I was bad. I used to steal my father's tokens. He used to go to the subway. Guilty. I used to steal. My mom and, kept her tokens in the top uh -huh. drawer. And I would, they would, the bodega would give me a dollar for the tokens. Yeah. <laughs> but back in the days, it was, yeah. I remember I it still was. I feel guilty. Right. I remember it was, I want to say it was like. 50 cents yes yeah, or 60 cents so i would yeah. take the token yeah. and i would wait outside the, the train station and it says you could have this for 50 cents instead of 60 cents ah. so you want to pay 60 cents? i'll give you it for 50 cents right. so i'll take a couple from my dad and i go across the street and play and play the video game the video game thing. right so that was my Pinball thing but i never got caught i never got caught for anything like bad i was a dude that tinkered the line like i knew Mm, like yeah. I think of the line, like I had my first cigarette, but I, you know, it wasn't something I wanted to do. Right. I smoked my first blunt. My, I was like twelve years old. Yeah. I wasn't really into it until I got older in high school. You know, right. I wore my heart on my sleeves, but you had to know how to put the face. Because like, it was a tough neighborhood. You too. had to tough. So, but like I said, my I think the first two weeks I got drop kicked. For what? Because. This, uh, I, they, they became best friends of mine. Alex knows them. It was yes. Darnell, but they had a cousin named Milton. They lived below me. So I just moved to the block. Something happened. I don't know. I started beating up Darnell or, because they were little than me, but they were like attacking me. His cousin Milton came out of nowhere like a Kung Fu movie and drop kicked me right there. And I was like, oh, oh, shit. Like, yeah. what's going on? And I, I, I can't recall what happened, but long story short, we all became Event, friends. That's how it happened. That's how it happened. Like, what are you doing to all? And they were poor, and we were poor. But yeah. but they were like, Darnell, what's his brother's name? They used to live, I was in 3B, and they lived in 2F or 2B. And, and every time we were cooked, they would come up to my house. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. I grew up in a building, mm -hmm. and there were so many types of people that had Jamaican, yes. French, and the daddy yep. French, mm -hmm. Puerto Rican, Dominican. Right. And I got this... As a young kid, I got this buffet because all my friends would Everything. be like, yeah. so talk about some of the things you used to eat I, back in the day. I, I tell you, I was a picky eater, so I can't say I ate a lot. Yeah. Um, I was mostly like, even my mother, my mother had to cook special food for me on the side because I didn't like some of the food, like uh, Miranda. It's like a fish that put up, uh, uh, my wife loves it, my mom make it. I can't say fish. I'm not a fish person. But the building you had a lot of, you had in the beginning, you had a lot of Jewish people. That neighborhood was Jewish people. Uh, and then that's when the uh, uh, minorities started moving to Rockaway. Rockaway was predominantly Jewish. Okay. If you still go there, it's still Jewish. Like where I live, you go four or five blocks down, you see mansions. You see freaking houses, four, five, six story houses. Wow. You know, you keep going. That's where our elementary school was on Mount Avenue. Mm -hmm. That area is kind of Bayswater, I want to say. All my teachers from first grade to second grade were pretty much all Jewish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I learned about gefilte fish. Uh -huh. I learned about... We did dreidel songs. Oh, like, no, you, we remember when you had like assembly and all that? Oh, we, we had all that, right. We did fiddle on the roof. I, oh, get out of yeah. here. Yeah. Like, no, our did, school was a like that. In South Jamaica, <laughs> Queens, like, we did fiddle on the roof. You know? Our school was nothing like but that. But even uh, as a kid, I knew, I was like, I should know more of the world. And right. I felt like I knew more than what I knew in my neighborhood by learning whatever right. I was learning in I, elementary I school. I was not an educational person. I was a person that wanted to be cool. Okay. Like, to me, that was the job. Okay, like, so I thought I need to be cool. What did, like, what did that entail back in the day? Uh, like that means cool? that you had to make sure you had the right gear. Okay. And there had to be the specific And what was that? Gear. Like, talk to like, me. Like, uh, Cooper bomber jackets. You had to get, it was a leather jacket with a little suede collar, but there had to be Cooper bombers. Yes. If you didn't have Cooper bomber jackets, then you have some bullshit jackets. Okay, gotcha. You know? You Is had that something had, you got like in, and you, in you the got low the East Delancey side? Street, okay, Delancey or you got it on Freeport, the free market where everyone Rockaway went to. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you had you you had to have the the Cooper or the sheepskin. Mm. You, you got to have one of those two jackets. You have a boom. And you the had hat. to be able to protect yourself. Exactly, because I got my shit taken. Okay. Uh, 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 <laughs> Uh, you gotta have. Oh, please! I, I got shit robbed so many times. Oh look! Uh, I learned my lesson. Uh, okay. But you gotta have. Remember, sometimes you gotta have the BBDs. You gotta have two of them. You gotta have the the short sleeve BBDs and the tank top, and you wear them together. Okay. 
uh, pinstripe Lees, Lees. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I remember when they, they used to steal your tags. Yes. Like if you were in the hallway and you had your Lees on, someone would just come behind yeah. and your fucking Lee tag. Yeah. Right I, I grew up in the Jansport era, so like uh -huh. we would take your Jansport string okay. and it's kind of like the Lee era. Like right. you had the Lee patches. So if you had a stack of Lee patches, that means you was a bad motherfucker. Right, right. But if you had a stack of or just a whole bunch of Jansport book bag strings, right. it was essentially right. the same thing. It was the same, the same thing. thing. In junior high school, there was a game, and I always say, I don't think nobody heard of this game. It was called Open Chess. Mm, yeah, I heard remember of, that. We were right. Open Neck. Or, or that, or Slap Your Neck. This was Open Chess. If you walk down the street, anyone could come up to you and just, yeah. boom, bang yeah. you in the chest. And you're like, so you got to walk around the high school like this. Yeah. I mean, junior high school, you walked around like this. Yeah. Snap Your Neck, Slap Your Neck. Yeah. So I'm like, or, okay. Or Gills. Like, you say something stupid, I'm like, right. give me mine. Right. So then I'm like, all right, I got to figure out. I gotta figure this shit out. So I became really good friends with this guy named Ed Walker. This was, I wanna say I was sixth grade, Ed Walker. Ed Walker's brother went to jail. Yeah. So Ed Walker was like, his brother went to jail. Nobody fucked with Ed's brother. So right. he was my friend. No one fucked with me. Right. They're like, oh, you don't fuck with Pete. You don't have to fuck with Ed. You know, you know who Ed, 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 Ed Walker's brother is? They're like, doom. And then my brother had a rep too as growing up. Okay. My brother passed now, but it was like this. So it was like, then you see the drug dealers, you go to 47th Street, you see the chains, and you see the cars, and you see the girls, and you're like, yo, you know, this is it. Now, now this is where you start growing up, your teen and your hormones, everything's going buck wild. Yeah, yeah. And you have no money. So how are you going to do anything with no money? And I'm talking about, if, if you get a quarter, you'll be good. 50 right. cents, you go get yeah. your candy, yeah, you get a bag of soda, chips. bag yeah. of chips or something. Yeah, some bond So yeah, no, it was, it was tough, but... You learned that you didn't have money when you were more older, like in junior high school-ish, when you started to in fashion. But growing up as like in elementary school, we we were all we didn't know we were poor. No, we had no idea we were poor. We were like the white girl, we were all in the same boat. Yeah, you didn't have it, I didn't have it. Nobody yeah. had it. You know, I had and, a great childhood. Yeah, I mean, it it was. I loved my childhood. Like I said, like with Alex, I'm like, and mind you, me and Alex became. I think we were only friends too because Alex moved. And shout out to Alex. Like Alex is, you know. He's somebody that just over the years mm -hmm. that I've met, you know, we met, he's from Far Rock. Right. But we met in Florida and he's just been this brother. Mm -hmm. Like I can't even, I can't right. even say a friend. He, like he, we were friends when we first met, but just over, over the decades. Over that, right. So you, you know, know him that long. I, yeah. I, I, I hold on to the little that I know of him. Yeah. And, and it speaks volume because I know who he is, even though I missed the majority of his whole entire life. I knew him as a child, yeah. but as a child, he was, I remember one story, we used to, we had no money, we used to climb these blackberry, I wanna say blackberries? Uh, with like literally yeah, blackberry trees in the back of the building. Back oh, of the, yes, the wild blackberry trees. The wild black, trees. and yes. we would climb the trees and yeah. we would be there all day. I would do that. Fuck it, stomach There was ache, a blackberry purple. tree outside of my, outside of my building mm -hmm. when I was growing right. up. Right. And, and I would fall out of that oh, damn tree. Oh, we used to fall, and then so one day we're fucking around. I don't know if we're, we were, I think we were climbing a fence to get to the tree or climbing it to, I, we were done. And Alex and Alex went climbing, we all climbed over. And you know how the top of the fence are like this, the yeah. little X's? So he, when he went to flip over, it caught him and it ripped, it ripped his oh. whole shit. And you see him. All his him, wrists, all his guts. It's like from here to here, like from here to here. And all you saw was white meat. Oh man. And he was, I, we were kids, under 10 maybe, 10 maybe around there. And it was just the most traumatic experience. You know how certain things stick yeah. out? With Alex, that was that was one thing that stuck out. Because we were always, all we did was get up in the morning. We're like, where you at? Where you at? And you met in front of the building. Yeah, and this is before beepers. This is this before, before cell phones. Ed, no, nothing. We, we all had no internet. Here, right. Or you meet at Far Rockaway Beach. Yeah. Everyone know where you're going to be at. I'm in Far Rockaway. Yeah. I'll see you when I get there. So what was the music? Like, what were you listening oh, to? Oh, man. I, I remember I used to play... I don't know if Alex's window was by my window. We had, so you had the two buildings and you had like a little, a little courtyard in the middle and whoever lived in the bottom of that first floor had access to a little courtyard. They had, you know, I was on the third floor. I think Alex was in the fifth floor, but I don't think we shared windows. But I used to play my, win my radio outside my window. I used to do that too. And I played it because I used to think that, oh my God, if Michael Jackson would hear his song, <laughs> If he, if he rolling by my hood and hear the song, he may want to come and say to my house. Yeah. You know, and then I used to play the songs outside to the girls that were in the patio. Wow. So, you know, and I would play it purposely. I played it out a window 
And I will make mixtapes myself on cassette tape. Yes. I would DDKs, just wait. Any, I would wait for Red Alert, you know, all the old school radio to come on. And I, would, and I would get mad and I would try to record it and pause it and rewind it and trying to get the mix in, like, yeah. you know, like the songs together yeah. without the radio thing yeah. in it. Like Latin and, Rascals exactly. and all those guys. Oh, I used to, oh man, oh, yeah, yeah, no, but it, it was. I, I had no qualms growing up, but I was I, I wanted to be cool. I wasn't a tough person. I wasn't a person that got in fights. I had no reason for me to say that. I'm like, you would no. I never had I think I had one one fight, two fights. You got rock was this something that you learned in your childhood that you brought to your adulthood? Oh, every life. Just life. Knowing who's who's behind you at all times and 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 that you could tell by the cars. And when you're walking down the streets, just look at the car window. You know exactly who's behind you. I remember this old cat told me that. He goes, just, just keep an eye on the car window. You don't like someone changing, you cross the street. Now, if you've seen that red jacket, you're like, the window's not following you cross the street. There's another red jacket in the cross the street. You, you got to be you know, aware, you know. But you learn, but that's how life is. I remember I was on a bike, my block, on a bike. Yo, let me borrow your bike for a second. I'll be right back. And I'm like, okay, mind you, my brother's right there down the block. Yeah. But I'm thinking, I'm nice. I'm like, yeah, okay, you can borrow my bike. I'll wait for you here. Waited. Waited. Yep. Yo, anybody see Carlos? <laughs> anybody see then Carlos? I came back. I ran to my brother. He was like, you know these people? No. Why the fuck you gave me your bike? You know, you and I was like, back? I never got the bike back. I, 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 we didn't know who we gave it to. Wow. So it was, but it was, it was that. And then, and um, even as kids, like bikes was currency. It was, a bike was, a, and we used to steal bikes. Yeah. We yeah. used to go, because we lived in Far Rockaway. Far Rockaway is a borderline of Long Island. Mm -hmm. So, and it was borderline to a neighborhood called Cedarhurst. Mm -hmm. That's where the right, rich white people live. I used to, uh, I used to, I used to caddy at a golf course, which was literally take a bike ride 10 minutes from my house. And, and you're in a whole different world. Like you see the green laws, but the kids back then, they would throw their bikes on the lawn and go inside. Yeah. So we back four or five of us, be like two on each bike, and we're riding around town. We're like, there's a bike right there. Bike we jump collected. over, grab the bike, boom. Wow. But then we knew the cops. You know, this one cop we knew, he was high school. Uh, oh, fuck, I'm not going to remember his name. Uh, Moreno, Moreno, he was an Italian cop. Yeah. He was cool. Security guard, Harold. I used to so, I don't know you say, I used, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I used to do see, stuff. Yeah, I used to do <laughs> stuff. With, uh, um, but it was it, it was like a sense of community. You don't learn. I don't think you'll learn how you grew up until you become a little bit an adult, and yep. then you start putting in perspective. Like, you know, I had government cheese. I had a five block. I used yeah. to get a five block pound of government cheese and powdered milk. Yeah. But it was like okay. I remember. I remember that. I remember <laughs> like on Foch, on American Foch, my mom used to go to this like little side church, mm -hmm. and they would give like food. Yeah. Food. food like, yeah. You would yeah, get huh? like a brick of cheese. Right. You would get the powder. The powder. Yeah. And then you would, if whatever planet was on, you would. You could get like free cereal, but it only just said cereal. Yeah, it, it says cereal. It, was it, a it, white it, box. it says flake. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly. Like corn yeah, yeah, cornflakes and, and a white. And it was box. like the bottom shelf type Root. shit, and and that's what it was. You yeah. know, like, and I don't, I'm not embarrassed by no, it. No, I, I, I had no, I had no. I'm, like, I'm hey, like, yo, I had an ill childhood. You know I what I'm had the best childhood. I tell yeah. you, my dad was a, 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 he he was a barber. He yeah. had, he had his own business in the city. I used to go to barbershop with him. I used to see how grimy the city was back mm -hmm. then. Where was the barbershop? Uh, the barbershop was on Ninth Avenue between 16 and 17th Street, which right now that whole neighborhood Something is, else. is yeah, it's not what it used to be. My I, I I get I get emotional because my daughter went to school. There's a, there's a, a charter school. It's like a big school, four floors. Each floor is a different school. And when she went to the high school, uh, my dad's shop was literally around, right around the corner. If he was still alive, I'm like, she would have she been going there for lunch. Yeah, because I used to go there all the time. I used to get, before my dad passed, I used to get, every Friday was my thing. I'd go over there, get my hair cut. Kick it with him down, for a second. How you doing? And that was my, my bonding moment yeah. with him. And he was, every time I walked in, he was so proud of me. Like, <gasps> there was my son, here's yeah. my son. But, yeah. but, but my dad was a character too. Yeah. You know, my dad was a... Uh, like past the next, the past, he's the next dude in charge. That's my dad. So, like, what was like one of the craziest things, or what's something that you learned from your pops? Oh man, uh, what did I learn from my pops? I would say money, like finances, like, like, don't, don't be stupid with your money. <laughs> my dad was, <laughs> man, fuck it, he's past. Who cares? My dad was a loan shark. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, we're past the. Right, he's past. He's past. He's past. Yeah, anyway, they so, want to go get him. No, they this gotta... is back in the days. But no, my dad was a loan shark. Mind yeah. you, he's my dad's a loan shark, and this church person. Yeah. But I had a best friend. His father ran numbers, but yeah. he had a full time job. Yeah. We we never lived flamboyant. 
it wasn't that we didn't have money. He always knew that you can't show your money mm. because someone's going to come get it. Yes. He, he always knew that. Just be careful who you tell, who you have, what you have, yep. and figure out how to make money. He always, hey, if you give me $1,000, I, I, I can make, you know, I can make you $1,000, yes. you know? Uh, if you give me time, I'm like, okay, how do you do that? You know, and then, and then you start becoming, you're in the street. So then you start saying, how do you do this? Wait, you, wait you, you're buying this and you're reselling it for this? Right, the hustle. The hustle. Like my dad came home with radios, bicycles, VCRs, shit fell off the truck, yeah. you know? So he's buying that, he's reselling it. And I'm like... All through he, the barbershop? He going to the barbershop. And, and it, it, was like, it was like the barbershop. You know barbershop. Anything you could get. I Anything grew up in the barbershop. Anything you bought in the barbershop, yeah. you could talk to somebody, yeah. you could say, dude, you know, you got any radios you're getting a hand on? Right. And it came to a point where it was not only like, like I'm talking about when I'm adult, it was like they still would come in. I'm 40 years old going to the barbershop. And, and they walk in and what do you want? My dad goes, oh, I need some chocolate and sure. Next thing you know, he's come back with a case of chocolate and sure. It don't take much. <laughs> because it, 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 it was like. It was a how, network. But that was, you do what you had to do. Yeah. It's like, that, that, that's what it was. I always tell people, you do what you had to do to survive. Yeah. So whatever it is, it was always, if you have an opportunity to get this and resell this, do it. It's very, it's very, I, to this day, I, this, I, I learned what I learned there, buying and reselling, I do it in this business. Okay. And anything I can make a buck on, I'm going to make a buck on. If I see something like, man, I could flip that. Yeah, like I could this. flip that and flip this. Okay. And, and so that was one of the things he was always financially aware. But it wasn't taught, it wasn't taught like, it wasn't taught to you. It was kind of like, just be careful with your money. Right. You know, you can make money doing this. You Pay know? attention. Right. You know, but it was basically my household was grow up and work. Mm -hmm. You know, it was college. I never went to college. College was never mentioned in my house. It's one of the reasons I probably didn't go to college. You know, I've never heard of college. Never knew about college. What did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a scientist when I was in junior high school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be an ice cream man. <laughs> you know, um, I, I had no... I had no... <laughs> No plans in my life whatsoever than what the day brought me. That's it. And all I knew was I hated school and I had to graduate. But then after graduation, what am I going to do? I seen, I seen friends fall. I know the neighborhood was bad. And it, that was my decision was, what are you doing after high school? Because your whole life was go here, go there. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're going to school. Tuesday, Wednesday, blah, blah. You're doing this. You're doing, you, had, you had schedules. After high school... I'm not going to college. What am I doing in my life? Right. I don't want to be on the block. I know what's going to happen if I be on the block. Yeah. So, you know. I had that same epiphany. Mm -hmm. When I graduated high school, I looked around and I was like, what are you doing? I said I could get locked up. Yep. Mm -hmm. I could get killed. Yep. I could hustle. Yep. I could work a dead end mm -hmm. job. Right. Or I could go someplace else and just kind of figure out what else is out there in the world. Exactly. And that's what I did. And then, I mean, I eventually came back. Right, right. But I needed to, to like kind of, like my OG used to say, you got to leave home to go home. Yeah. Yeah. And don't forget everything you learned in right. the hood. Home, you, listen, you hood learned rules apply everything, everything I, I, out in the world. Growing up, I swear to God, your childhood is what's going to what's gonna carry you through your whole entire life. Mm -hmm. With your trauma, the happiness, your joy, what, how you see your parents being raised, how, how, how your siblings are raised. It's a psychological thing that you, you carry forward without even knowledge of carrying it forward. Yeah. It just happens. Like, I had my kids. I grew up in a Pentecostal house. I used to go to church four or five days a week, Sundays twice. Wow. So I was like, I can't do this no more, Dad. I'm yeah. like, I can't do this. I, 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 I don't want to do this. I don't believe in this, and I don't. And I got, I'm sorry. I'm not doing this. No and what was his response? He didn't like it, but I'm like, what are you going to do? I'm, 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 I'm grown now. You know, I think it was like 12, 13. I can't do it. But I battle with it because I like religion. I, I enjoy religion. I think it's an amazing thing. Yeah. I just don't like it being weaponized. Mm. You know, where they're like, you don't do this, you're going to hell. You don't do this, this is going to happen. Oh, you do it? I'm like, wait a minute. You know, I'm like, you know, my brother was an alcoholic. But the day before my brother died, my brother wanted to go to church. That evening, drunk, he wanted to step in church. They didn't want him to go to church. Mm. And I said to myself, but isn't that when the door should be more open at any time in anyone's life? Like, how are you closing the door if somebody wants to go in your church? So all your little lessons, I said to myself, fuck this, fuck that. But I don't, I, don't, I love religion. Right. I think religion is an amazing thing. 
but don't weaponize it. I tell people I'm an atheist. What's the difference if I tell you I'm a Catholic? What's different if I tell you I'm a Muslim? What, what, what's, what's, why, is, why is it affecting you with that, this outlook? I'm like, I, I never brought my kids up on religion. Right. Because I say, I say, you don't know what religion is. How can I teach you something at, at two, three, four, five, six years old? Because you're going to deem that's the correct religion. Yeah. There's a lot of religions out there, I told my kids. You want to find religion, you got to figure it out mm. if you choose to. I go, it's a beautiful, I say religion is, I never told my kids, I never talk bad about it. I think religion is a personal choice. Mm -hmm. You need to understand it for yourself. You can't listen to what I tell you about my, I, and, and that was in life with my kids. I never told my kids, I said, this is my experience. Your experience is going to be different. And so how many kids do you have? I have two kids. And so what have you learned from your kids? <sighs> I learned my kids are just awesome. <laughs> but my kids are sheltered. I, I, uh, my kids are spoiled rats. And it's because <laughs> and it's not it's our fault. It's because my life was growing up so not nothing in my hand, not going on vacations, never. You know, I used to go to Puerto Rico, but that's not as... But it was like my kids, I give them the world. And I give it to so much where I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I'm tired. Stop asking for money. Stop asking for money. Yeah. I'm like, at your age, you're, you're, you're going to be 25. Wow, I was already out of the Marine Corps at 25, working a full-time job, you know? So, I mean, my, my kids are humble. My kids are smart. They don't see the world like how nasty it is. Like, I even tell my daughter, I said, you need to think about whether you want kids or not, because I don't know the direction this world's going. Mm -hmm. I say, it seems like it's going backwards. Like, everything is just literally, especially you being a female, it's going backwards. And it's a sad state, you know. It's a sad state, but I, but, but it, the, having kids just changes your whole life, because now all I do is for them, mm -hmm. and as the reason is because I want to give them that experience that I didn't have. Like my dad, I love my dad. My dad is the best man in the world, but he was that best man in the world probably in the last ten years of my life. Okay, gotcha. You know, the first year he was a fucking dick. He was yeah. an asshole. He was a religious person with a strong hand. <laughs> you know yeah. and then as a kid you dig into his like why were you that way you got, it has to come from somewhere yeah. like you're not beating your kids because you're beating your kids yeah. so I asked him about so tell me about your dad because I wanted to get into it yeah, hey I need to know your story because I got into the whole ancestry I need to know where you came from Yeah. that oh well I had 15 16 siblings we tried to do a family tree recently I found that I have only on my father's side first cousins only 60 something first cousins. 60 something. 60 something first cousins. First only cousins. First cousins on my father's side. Only on my father's side. Jesus. All right. So my father had, so it, the first thing when I asked him about his dad was, I'm like, tell me about your dad. He goes, oh, I always feel it. I thought he was going to kill me. And in my head, I'm saying, how is this the first thing coming out your mouth when I ask you about your dad? Like the first thing you say is that I feel he was going to kill me. That's some psychological shit right there. And that's yeah. the first thing coming out of your mouth. Yeah. I love you, Dad. I know you were a dick. You were a great man. Ten years, you know, you, you figured things out, yep. you know, which was, which was a blessing because all my <laughs> niece and nephew, like grandpa, grandma, I'm like, your motherfuckers didn't know. Like my mother, my, my mother has dementia. Oh, grandma is sweet. I'm like, sweet? <laughs> this lady right here? And I just fuck, I'm like, I said, she used to walk around the house with a belt around her neck like it was a piece of jewelry. And I look at them. I go, no. Not every now and then. It was like, you know how you get up in the morning, you put your rings on, you walk. And she got up in the morning, you got dressed. She put her she, belt on. And she put the belt around her neck. Because <laughs> she knew. And she like, knew. I'm going to be whipping some ass She's going to be whipping somebody today because <laughs> your five kids are going to be acting up. <laughs> it was, but you, this yeah. is the thing. Like, right. like, who was it? Matthew McConaughey. I saw an interview on how it's done. He was like, he wrote, wrote a book and he was saying how his father. His book is excellent. He said how his father, he's beat his ass to punch him in the face. And Howard said, I don't know how you're not. He goes, it. It's just the way it was. I don't, I don't, I don't fault my dad. He goes, I deserve some of these shits. Hell yeah. He goes, it was just the way it was. Was it right? Was it wrong? Right. There's no right or wrong. It was just the I, way it and was. And I'm here now. I, I'm, and I'm here now. I, yeah, his I, book was called Green Lights. Yeah. That book got me through the pandemic or one yeah. of the books. Like, it was excellent. I was here during the pandemic. Yeah. I was in this building. The pandemic. That's, I, I always was an amateur photographer. Yeah. Always. I love taking pictures. Love taking pictures. I'm actually want to come out with a book, but uh, that's a whole hell of So during COVID, I started taking purposely pictures. Mm -hmm. Pictures of the streets. People, like how empty it was. You wow. know, how, how, how just desolate. And me and my wife, we used to uh, uh, do these walks early in the morning. Like just see the Brooklyn Bridge with nobody on it. Wow. Where, where it's just quiet. 
and and every we're sitting on the bridge. And it's surreal. And we're sitting on the bridge. There's a way for the sun to come up, you know. And it's like you're looking around at the time. It felt amazing. You yeah. were like, yeah, maybe we should do this like every 10, 15 years. Shut the fuck down. <laughs> yes. And reset because I'm we doing it was our daily. It was thing. very serene. It I remember was, like was, coming to the city. It was, I was crazy. Coming from Staten, and I would come out here, and I'd be like. Yo, this is a good. This is a good right. amount of people. Yeah, because I mean, like every, I didn't have to wait in line for shit. Right. Everybody was chilling. Everybody was. Chill. It was very quiet. But, and I was like, but 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 that whole thing with the city was like, I, I think that experience, like I have people that I don't know their kids. Mm. You know, I have people that I don't know their babies because I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I have my niece and nephews right now. She don't know me because I I don't I I don't know you because you were you were I didn't have a chance for two and a half years. To see you and be around you and, and you to get to develop, know me, yeah. develop a face. So I'm working on those things now with the yeah, little yeah. ones, you yeah. know. So that whole experience was was surreal. Like I don't understand. Like I'm like we lived through this shit. Like we lived through a pandemic. We lived through 9/11. We lived through like like all these things, and and we're still here. What brought you to the Marine Corps? How did that happen? Oh, I, I, I'm gonna speak the truth, man. A guy came into the fucking high school with his dress blues on, and I said. I could get a lot of ass with that uniform. <laughs> I ain't lying to you. Not knowing. Right. Not knowing. You said if I put on that. If I put on that uniform, oh, I'm getting ass. Left okay. Right. Yeah. That the dress blue, that motherfucker looked good. I'm wow. like, oh, yes. Did it, uh, did it work? But no one told me <laughs> how hard the Marine Corps was. Okay. No one told me that I'm going to get fucked up in the Marine Corps. Like, it's the hardest one to go to. Okay. No, I had no one advising me whatsoever. The recruiter was lying to me. Right. And I was like, I, but, but I knew I had to get out. Yeah. I knew it I was an be, option. It wasn't, it wasn't an option staying there for Rockaway. Mm -hmm. That was not an option. I need to get the fuck out of Rockaway. Mm -hmm. How? I don't know. Wow. Okay. There's your out. There's my out. I could fucking travel the world the way they put it in your face. Yeah, yeah. And now it's the first time ever. Boom. I'm going to, I'm 18 year old. I, I just turned 18. I went to boot camp in February of of 89. I turned 18. My parents signed me. So what was boot camp like? It was it was hell. It was amazing because it the, the marine. I guess only speak the marine. What what when you figure out what they did to you, it's amazing. Is their job was to break you down and build you back up. Okay. Basically and. You could do nothing right. Even though you did it right, you still didn't do it right. Oh. It was just, you come to figure out is that they, they're, they're creating soldiers. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Their job is how much stress, how much shit can you take? Because if you go out there and when shit really hits the fan and you, and you can't take this shit I'm giving you here, that's ain't bullets, ain't nobody killing you, somebody is giving you a heart. If you can't take that, then yeah. I'm not putting you out there. Right. So... So the emotional, it was an emotional thing. And I started with a platoon, I don't know, 60, 50, 60 people graduated with half the amount. Yep. Uh, some of them got kicked back to the other class, but it was like, what's going on? Like, what did I get myself into? Because you wake up and you're, you know, guys this way, guys this way, guys in the bunk, you have people screaming at you. It was just so crazy. And anyway, I wanted to quit so many times, but a, I couldn't go back to my block without my uniform. Mm. That wasn't an option. If I go back without this uniform, I'm gonna be a loser. Right. Two, my senior drill instructor was like supposed to be a dad, the good one, not really. And I was having a hard time. And he just goes like this. He goes to me, and this chain go for the shot. It's a game. He goes like life is a game. Play the game. It's not personal. Just play the game. That's all. And I'm like, your pop said. Play the game. Play the game. It's not personal. It's not personal. Not this personal. training that they're doing is nothing. It's not personal. personal. All, all, all they're doing is this is their job. Just, just play. Just go with it. Just don't, don't take things personal. Because I always used to think like I did something wrong. Right. Is it me? What, what did I do wrong? Why are you treating me this way? I didn't do nothing wrong to you. Yeah. But it, 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 just play the game. They, 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 that's just their job. Their job is to make you uncomfortable. And I'm like, oh, okay, just play the fucking game. And so you when know? he gave you that advice, it, it was turn the corner. It was turn the corner. It wasn't easy, but okay. but you turn the corner, and then and then it became this world where you're like, hey, you're graduating, and it's the most, the best thing I did in my life. It was the most amazing moment in my life where you accomplished an accomplishment that very few people do. A Riddick Bowe, heavyweight champion from Brooklyn. Yep. You joined the Marine Corps, dropped out. Mm. You know, 
Then the finished Marine Corps boot camp. He went in thinking he was shit. Yeah. Riddick Bowe, heavyweight champ. Wow. Finished Marine Corps dropped out. Damn. <laughs> so it tells you how I tell people right now, I even tell my, I love the military. I said, don't go to the Marines. I said, go Air Force. Okay. I go Air Force, the girls and guys work out together. Yeah. It's not fucking hard. You got suites. I go, but it's 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 an exp- as a kid, you know, you I'm, I'm going to Japan for the first time. What was that like? Japan was I, I never left. I kept I kept renewing my orders to stay because I was in Okinawa, Japan, mm-hmm. and I loved it so much. I didn't want to leave. What did you love about it? Uh, the people, I because I get this question asked all the time. What is the people? The people were the most kindest, generous people in the world. And besides the island being beautiful, it was oh, a small island off of mainland Japan. Besides that being beautiful, it was the people. Did you have to speak Japanese? Uh, I, I I spoke some. Don't ask me now. I can't do it. Okay, yeah, many, yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, I I, I I got away with it. Okay. Uh, because you had to. You're there. You're especially being so long. Right. So I hung out with. I'm a social person. I meet all people. I like to meet all different type of people. Right. Uh, one night I met this mafia, this yakuza-san guy at a fucking a club, you know, and he was drunk, and I'm sitting next to him. And he looks at me. I don't know why. He goes, ah, Tony Montana. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, why, why? I don't know why are you coming up. I have a shaved head. I'm like, yeah, I don't he know called why you Tony Montana. Up. And then he goes, come on, come on, let's go have a drink. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I don't know if he came to like me. I don't know why. So we started talking, got his number. And next thing you knew, I was going places that Americans weren't allowed to get into. Mm. And, and once they saw me, oh, I, I, I used to, my brother nicknamed him for a rockway growing up was Chino. Mm-hmm. Back then, nicknames were important. Very. You know, it's like, yo, what's up, D? Yeah, yo, whatever, you know. And they were given to and you. They were, yeah, they were given to you. You didn't give yourself. You didn't get it to one, they no, were given yeah. to you. So my brother had Chino. Why? I don't know. But, hey, yo, Chino, Chino, Chino. And I, I, I went, I went, and then, then you said, oh, that's little Chino's brother. That's little Chino's little Chino. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to Marine Corps. I need to have my name. Then you go to little Chino. I say, can't be little Chino. I'm not little Chino. So I used to go by, by Chino and Okinawa. Everyone knew me by Chino and Okinawa. Yeah. It was, it was, you got to have a name. Um, but uh, it was, it was the best, it was, I, I forgot the question because I went off but somewhere. But you, you said, I just want to, I don't want to brush over this. No, you yeah. said you was kicking in with the Yakuza? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's one Yakuza guy. Wow. Yeah, where I could get, I could go into places no one could go into. Yeah, I was 18. You was 18 kicking was 18. in with the Yakuza? Okay, yeah, I was 18. I was 18 years old. I got there at 18. I was in Camp Hansen, which is up north, of, of, and everything's down south in Okinawa. Up north is where all the training is. It was miserable for the first couple months, and I got orders to change my, 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 my base to go to Camp Forster. That's when I met some of my boys, met some boys from Brooklyn, met some boys, whatever. Right. We used to hit the clubs. I was in house music. And this cat, this club went, he just, we became friends out of nowhere. That's and everyone, crazy. everybody, and it, So now you're kicking in with the Yakuza and you so have I like power? Everywhere. Yeah. Everybody, why, wherever I go. <laughs> why girls, so the girls say, listen, Chino could get in that club, but no one could get into. Yeah. There'll be a line outside. Yeah. I roll up my boys. Ah, oh, Chino's son, come right in. I, Chino's I son. Shit. Holy I shit. Yeah, I, I was like, so you're a was, kid from Far Rockaway, Far Queens, Rockaway. Now I'm hanging out Japan, Okinawa with, with some yakuza, I, and, <laughs> and, and I'm not talking about like a young, like he was an older man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, so you somehow stumbled just, upon just a position of power, right, and prestige. But but that was for a short period of time. Okay, what lo- hard? Okay. fucked up. How'd you fuck up? Talk about that. <laughs> because <laughs> all right, so Japanese people, I'll tell you this: the girls in Japan like black dudes, straight up. I am, and I'm not talking about handsome black dude. I'm talking about if you black, <laughs> if you if, if you black, fuck Hispanic. If you're a dark skinned person, Hispanic, whatever you are, yeah, you had it made in Okinawa. Okay, you had it, you had it, you had it like you had it made. So, so teenagers uh, would want to hang out with me and my friends because we would get into these Japanese clubs, mm-hmm. and these clubs were like three, four floors. You pay a price and you like you can eat, you have all food. It was just amazing. House music, right. karaoke, all everything's popping off. So one day we dance in a dance floor, Yogi Sun's there, all these teen girls out there. Yogi Sun gets on his knees and looks under one of the girls' skirts. Uh, I scolded Yogi Sun on the dance floor. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? You can't, yo, ma, no, you can't do that. To the Yakuza dude. Yeah. You scolded the Yakuza. I straight up. But my, but my mind's not there. I'm like, okay. this is a 16 year old girl, man. Okay, gotcha. You 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 can't be doing that. Dude. Okay, gotcha. Nah, that's not cool, man. And then what happened? And I scolded him, and 
That was the end of that. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I would go to the clubs. They wouldn't let me in. Wow. He uh, shut, I would, he yo, shut I would it call, down. I had his house number. I would talk to his wife. Yeah. I would call. The one, oh, he's not here. Wow. And it was just the end of that. I want to say a good six months. Probably three, six months. Maybe okay. a little longer. Yeah. I can't remember. But, it was a good ride. But, it good was, ride. but okay, now I, 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 I want to bring my family there next year. This year is Europe. Yep. Um, because it's a place, if you look it up, some of the, I don't want to say the oldest people in the world live there yeah. in Okinawa. And it's just Japanese people. It's just, it's a whole different And so world. how long were you in the Marine Corps? I was there for four years. I was in Okinawa, Japan for over about three years because I didn't want to leave. Okay. So we you. only, when you're in the Marines, you have your first four years, you're obligated to do one year overseas. Mm. That's your obligation. You have to do one year somewhere overseas. Unfortunately, unfortunately for me, my first year, my first duty session was overseas. So all I had to do was 365 days, get orders, probably go back to States. Yeah. I love this so much. I said, I don't want to leave. Can I, can I stay here one more year? When that year was up, I said again, I said, can I just stay here to the, to the end of my contract? It was just, I had it made. Fantastic. I had um, a mama-san on my, on my way I lived, my barracks. So a mama-san had one mama-san per floor. So you had a one floor. You may have two guys' room. You may have. But what's a mama son? A mama son was someone that she was hired. She would she would do your laundry. Ah. So for twenty, this is why you're wondering for twenty dollars a payday. So every two weeks, twenty dollars. All you had to do was put your clothes outside your door before you go to bed. You wake up in the morning and shit would be there. So so my uniform. If I have an inspection in the morning, I put my uniform. I come out. My shit's fucking spick and span, iron wow. clean, and ready to go wow. for inspection. Yeah. Twenty dollars every two weeks. Where, where am I going? Right. And Papa San, I would pay Papa San, you know, two, three hours to spit shine my boots. Inspection mm. of just put the boots out, wake up in the morning, my boots are spit shine. Now, you had Mama San, Papa San per floor. We had, I don't know, five, uh, four or five floors. So these people, it sounds like nothing, but you put two people per room, say about 50 rooms, you have 100 people paying $20 a day. Yeah. That's bank. Yeah. But that was one of the main reasons. But the people were just, it, it was just... It was just, I met a lot. Of, I, I still have friends. I have, a, I, have, I'm, I'm, I have a friend that he's, he's a fisherman in Okinawa. Wow. Yeah, he always goes, Pete, when you come down, and he used to be a club promoter. <laughs> I have some friends with him. I have DJ friends. So, like, it's there. crazy how people, yeah. like, evolve and do different Everything. things. I had a, we had a radio station. We used to do, a, we used to do a, a little radio spot on a radio station in Okinawa, Japan. Well, I used to play some Latin music. That's because crazy. then we went from house music, we switched over. To, to become, uh, uh, it was, uh, it was, we had a house group first. It was called, oh uh, man, Born to House. I remember that was a crew we were, we were house, we were dance house music. You Born know. to House. Born to House. We had our back, our cars and everything. Wow. Born to House. And then. And so what was some of the house music? Because it's like a big difference it between. Was over there, no, over there, they're, they're pretty tight with the music. Okay. So we hooked up with some DJs and they would lo they loved house music. Mm. Like this shit, before Jay-Z did this shit, we were yeah. doing this shit in Okinawa. Doing the rock. This was, this was yeah, the, the, this the, the triangle. House. So we were oh. like, yo, pay some house. Yeah, oh, you would say that from the crowd. <laughs> yeah, from the crowd. So we were like, you know, top you of the house. Yeah. So we were like, you play some house music. Yeah. And then Jay-Z came like, oh, no, fuck, we've been doing that shit back in wow. the day. <laughs> so yeah. we would put the sign up to the DJ, and when we walked in the club, we were that big. We walked in, they knew who the fuck we were. And then you, they would play house oh, music. Oh, they would play house music. But what's just, some of the songs? Oh, and, and, and every, I can't even remember. Uh, I, I can't remember how. Okay. So, but I, it's I, pretty I, 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 you know what's funny? It is a point, because I have a playlist here. And house music was, it's, I still love house music. I want to nerd out on, on the diamond stuff now. Oh, okay. This so where, where are we right now? Right now we're in the Empire State Building. Okay. Uh, I work for a company called Empire Diamond Corporation, and they are the original tenants in the building. The building opened in 1931. The company moved in in 1931. But at that time, only 10 floors were open. Okay. Uh, it was open during the Depression, 1930s. Yep. Um, so the nickname of the building was called the Empty State Building. But they used to put the lights on on the top floors all over the place and make it assume that there were people in the building. Ah, okay. <laughs> Mind you, it was, it was in the 30s, depression. Nobody, you know. But he moved in and uh, he, he still, to this day, his partner took up with the original. This Nobody's been in this building. No company has been in this building longer than the Empire State Corporation. Which I don't know if we're gonna be here. We, we we're trying to make it for hundred years. Okay, yeah, it's coming up. So, so that's how I started. How does you know like I don't know much about diamonds. So like what what have you learned in thirty oh, years about I diamonds? Learned so much about diamonds. Uh, right now it's, uh, it's diamonds are. I got a, a customer asked me a question. What is diamonds worth? Right. I go nothing. Mm. And she looked at me. She go, How can you say that? This is your job. I go a diamond is worth what someone's willing to pay for it. I go like a car, 
like a, a cell phone, a shirt. I go, you can get a shirt for a buck. You could buy a shirt for three thousand dollars. Probably the same material, cotton. Why are you paying three thousand dollars for the shirt? Why are you paying one dollar for the shirt? So and that's all subjective. It's all subjective. And, and but, context, but with yeah. diamonds, as I'm a person where if I'm gonna do something, I'm, I'm in. What are you doing? How do you do that? I'll sit down and like and I'll keep my ears open. Because in life is copy and repeat. In life, if you if you sit down with a lawyer long enough, you, you you're gonna talk lawyer lingo. In this business kept my mouth shut, listen, but I always ask questions. How do you do that? See little uh, uh Aaron, Aaron Halpern, he's a diamond cutter. Oh Hasidic Jew. You know, oh, instead of drilling yeah. off is there with cutting diamonds. What are you doing? Like, how do you cut this diamond? Boom, diamonds, you do this. A diamond cuts a diamond. This machine does this. I'm always like, okay. I so you were like in the shit. I would always would like, just look. I mean, like, just look, because I'm dropping off a diamond to Aaron Hopper to cut for me. Okay. But while I'm there, let me pick your ear. Okay. What are you doing? Yeah. How's this? Because I always want to know what's going on. Right. How do you deal with this situation? So you've seen all aspects of I've seen of all aspects of this okay. business, but okay. it's, it's an amazing business. It's like anything else. If you don't know about it, you're going to be taken for a big fool. Nowadays, it's real hard because now you have lab-grown diamond thrown in the mix, which is not good. I learn every single day. Life is learning. You, you never in life stop learning. You never in life stop making mistakes. Your mistakes, you learn from them. Um, but it was an industry that was like, I was like, wow. you know. And then I'm seeing, why is this person charging so much for the same diamond that this person is charging less? Why is this? And you start getting to know the houses, the Tiffany and Company, the Van Cleef, the Harry Winston, yeah. you know, the big ball. And you're like, how can they sell this diamond at this price when this company sells it at this price and I can get it for this price? This motherfucker making five thousand <laughs> percent and this guy's making, you know, fifteen yeah. percent. So it's like, but why why is Harry Winston? Because he's established himself as an luxury line of jewelry. Tiffany, he's been around for you know, hundreds of years, you know, uh, they started with glass. They started with um, 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 more stuff like that. So it, it was. It became. I became involved with antique jewelry. I became involved with the whole aspect of how jewelry is made. Um, um, the, the 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 behind it, how it's manufactured. So so that's where I started saying to myself, Why well, don't do my own shit? Right. That was. I mean, because I was. It's probably twenty five. 20 plus years, and I was saying, why don't I do my own thing? Because I'm looking around and I'm seeing things. Now I know, I know how to make this. Yep. I know who to talk to to design this for me and make it for me. I know how this guy could do this. I know where to get diamonds from this guy. Yeah. I know how to get gold from this guy. I know how to sell gold to this guy. You know. But it took you 25 it, it took years, years to, to narrow it down. But and it, to develop the relationships. Really, and that, the relationships in okay. this business yeah. is the key aspect okay. because if you and, and this your word is your whole entire life and one mistake nobody's dealing with it mm -hmm. I, I i you know how many people that have been blackballed literally i have had their signs on people's boots in 47th street don't sell to this guy in the diamond district yep they have pictures don't sell to this guy don't sell to this guy wow you know because this is right now i go to 47th street and go to i could go to aaron hopper aaron hopper you have a a five carat D flawless anything like that. He goes, yeah. I said, let me take it. I have a customer. For it. I go in there, sign for it, walk out of the office for half a million dollars. No, do with just my signature. Just your signature. No, no. Because of relationship. Because of relationship. I could, yep. Have you made any mistakes in uh, that you like? I have no. Okay. I have made mistakes where uh, it's just silly mistakes, size wrong. Um, okay. Uh, but, but never no. like anything nefarious. No. To the point that because that's what people. No, you know, get on blackballed and that no, kind of thing. No, but but you you have different type of customers. You have customers that are picky, bougie. You have customers that are I want this, I buy this, I will take this. You know, right. like I love those customers. They, I I don't know what I want, Peter. I have them now, Peter. Can you get me one? I'm looking for. I don't care. Just put it together for me. What's your budget? Just show me. Take a picture. I love it. I want it. Boom. You know, it's like that. And I'm a person where I tell people it's like I'm gonna teach you how to buy. Okay, can we have like a crash course? Teach you how to buy. Right now. Right now, teach you how to buy. You're looking for an engagement. I'm looking for an engagement ring. First thing I'm going to tell you is make sure whatever you're looking for that the diamond is GIA certified. Okay. All right, GIA certified is the Gemological Institute of America. They are the most respected diamond grading institute in the world. Meaning, whatever they put on this certificate about this diamond is biblical. It's law. It is what it is. There's okay. no if, no ands, or uh. Now, you have other agencies that grade diamonds as well we don't like those industries because they tend to grade diamonds better 
And if you have a diamond that's graded better, you can sell it for more money. Mm. So in the whole world, if you have this, like if you say, well, you want to sell me a diamond, I'm like, yeah, is it GI certified? Don't come in, just send me the certificate. Because, and, and, then, and then upon inspection, I'll make sure the diamond's right, but just show me that that is the most thing. Uh, Two, I would tell you, shop around. Shop around. Shop around. Shop around. Make up a phone call. Call people. See, please. I say, because I don't want you to come back to me saying I ripped you off. I'm very competitive, extremely competitive with my prices, but I can't say I'm the cheapest. No one can say they're the cheapest. Right. You, you don't know where this guy get his diamond from. You don't know where this guy get his diamond from. He may have this diamond in his vault for God knows how long and just wants to get rid of it. That's why he's selling it so cheap. Yeah. You know, so I always say, call a couple of people and then let's compare apples to apples. Tell him you're looking for a one carry GVS one, whatever. I'm talking my language now. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I go, okay. So you just pick up the phone to any jewelry store. I say, hey, I'm looking for a one carry GVS one. What do you have? GIA certified. GIA certified uh, uh, around uh, a GVS one diamond. You yeah. Know? He said, okay, can you just send me a copy of the certificate? If he says no, all right, thank you. Hang on the phone, I'll deal with them. Right. Because it, 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 no one should never say no to that question. This is my diamond here. You can do whatever you want with it. Right. I'll give you, and then I'll be like, let's compare apples to apples. Give me the cert. Because a diamond is a lot of factors into what goes into a diamond besides the weight, the color, and clarity. What else goes in? Fluorescence, uh, angles, um, table measurements, the cut quality, is it an excellent cut, is it a good cut, is it a fair cut, is it a poor cut? It's it a goes lot on. of factors. So if you get someone that don't know, it's, it's, it's the depth of a diamond. When it comes to a round stone, you don't want it too deep and you don't want it too thin. Right. The way, the way when it comes to round stones, you want the diamonds to come in. I mean, you want the light to come in and you want the light to pop out. That way it gives it the brilliance. Yeah. If it's not cut properly, the light will go just through the diamond, not giving it any, any life. But then you have different shapes of diamond. The emerald cuts don't have facets. Emerald cuts has steps. Right. So it's, it's not really a, a diamond that's going to be, but those diamonds are famous with bougie people and like very wealthy people. They like getting like four, five, six carat emerald cuts. Oh. Yeah, the emerald cuts are, and it looks good. You get it really, really nice. You look good. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, that's my, that's how I will, I always want the customer to be an educated customer. An educated customer is a good customer because either I'm going to sell to you or I'm not. But I don't care if I don't sell for you. Because you know what you're going to remember? That I taught you how to buy a diamond. I told you how to buy it. And you can say, hey, I'm buying here, but I, I may get a wedding band from you. Yeah. Or I may do that. I mean, my whole job is to make you to make sure you ain't spending your money foolishly. Right. That's it. And, and then you, when they get to where they need to, they'll <clears> yeah, back and be like, yo, Pete, uh, yeah. did, he looked out. He told me what That's the deal it. was. That's it. Um, one of Alex's friends, I think I, 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 I sold him something. I, I forgot what it was. Uh, it wasn't a major. But, but I just, I, and I tell him, and I'm, just as I'm talking to you, I'm like, I'm, listen, you need to do your homework. Right. I say, because I don't want you coming back to me and say, yo, you know, Pete ripped me off. Right. You know, I'm like, no, no, no. I told you to do the homework. Yeah. And, and then, shop around. And shop around and talk to, I'm like, because I said, you're going to educate yourself. You're going to be like this. All right, Pete, I found this good diamond. I had it before. Show me the certificate. How much they selling to you for? I'm making a certificate of like, but dude, are you just saying the price because you, you, you're trying to get me to drop mines? Right. I go, because if, if you're telling the truth, hang on my phone, hang this conversation when I call and buy the diamond. That's a really fucking, I can't get that price. I don't have a problem doing that. Right. Why? Because now you're getting a deal. Now I'm happy that you're getting a deal. How does one prevent like the switcheroo? In the sense of like, I bring this diamond and then they right. switch just, it out. Just, I mean, you got to deal with respectable people. If you're asking me to, uh, hey, I got to size your ring. Some places, I, I know some people they can do it right in front of you. You can see them do the work right in front of you. Right. But you got to be able to trust the people you, you, you work with. Now, is it capable of someone fucking up? And, yeah. And, and someone screwing you over? A hundred percent. Are Are pieces going to get lost? Yes, I had a piece lost over the holiday. When you uh, say a piece, what do you a mean? Piece, like a I, had, like, I, had, I had a jeweler that was supposed to fix a piece for me. He couldn't find it. Oh, shit. And, but that's the industry. I mean, it wasn't a crazy piece, but that's the industry. You know, I'm like... It's just like it is what it is, but it's, it's. I, I love, I love the industry. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's, it's good. It's good when you educate the people on how to buy jewelry. It's like I tell people, don't go to, don't go to Zales, don't go to K Jewelers, don't go to these places. Why is that? You know, because they're commercial places. They're they they don't sell top quality diamonds. They're they're in it. But they and, grade them top quality. No, they don't. They, they have their own grading system. Oh. They do sell GIA certified some of these places if you, if you ask. Right. But a lot of these places, they certify themselves. And if you ask for GIA certification, yeah, the premium? price is really extremely high. It's a premium. Yeah, it's going to be more. And that is if you're buying, like, you know, a big 
a, an engagement ring. Yeah. If you're buying, you know, like something like this, yeah. these diamonds are not going to be. Uh, no one's going to certify okay. these. And your ring. Okay, right, no gotcha. one's going to. I mean, if you want to, yes, you could get it certified. But no one's going to certify because they're little. So no, one's gonna, no one's going to do so it. So with the whole question of like what somebody should pay for an engagement ring is it's that subject. Okay, subjective. Subjective. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if you go to me and say, hey, I'm, first thing I'll tell you, do this, do this, do this. And then I'm like, give me a high and give me a low. Right. Watch a high, especially with men. We think with dollars. That's all we think. We, we don't think I have to spend it. We think like, this is what I have. Right. So I always go, give me a high, low. Like, I don't want to spend no more on this. I would like to spend this. Right. And then I will go to you. I'm like, I will give you options from your low to your high. And sometimes when you when you get when the when the diamond colors the colors of the diamond start with D, being the best and it works its way down the color chart D E F yeah. G it works D D E F being the whitest and so on and so forth that's how it works. But sometimes you got to have a jeweler's eye. Like I can look at a diamond and see the imperfections because I have a jeweler's eye. I know what to see. Yeah. You don't. You can see a diamond and say it's amazing. I can say, oh well. There's a couple of imperfections here. There's one here that has a chip on the girdle. You know, there's, but there's yeah. a regular old person that can see it. see that. So I would tell people, are you buying studs? Is it for an engagement ring? I'm like, don't. I said, listen to me. Look at these colors. Look at the I color. Look at the J color. I'm like, people get afraid when you go down the alphabet. Right, but right. I'm like, just trust me. Look at them. I yeah. said, don't look at what it is. Look at the piece. Because somebody, if you get these diamonds cut properly uh -huh. and they're low color, I, J, K, K is in, I and J, I like to play around with, you could get yourself something a little bit more bigger. Right. Because diamonds are, are, are priced on color and clarity and weight. A one carat GVS2 is gonna be more expensive, I mean, more expensive than a one carat JVS2. Wow. Because it goes down the thing. So it's a whole, it's a whole. It sounds absolutely fascinating. It, it's, it is because, but then you get to the history. Like I like digging down to the old school cats, the Harry Winston, the Tiffany, the Van Cleef, yeah. because these guys, they made jewelry. Like they made these intricate pieces that are just timeless, yeah. you know? And I keep seeing this, but I don't see, I don't see representation. I see Fifth Avenue and all I see is Rich white dudes, you know, like like I don't see like this guy. I knew I I, I don't know him personally. Um, uh, he was on the corner of Forty Seventh and Six. Yeah, he had a booth there. He saw watches. I see him every single day. Always with the rappers. That motherfucker's big. Yeah, that, they got the jewelry. He has yeah. a store. He has a store in Fifth Avenue. A store in Dubai. Right. But I, you know, I'm looking at him. I'm like, he started with a booth. In a, a diamond booth. district. In the diamond district. He wasn't making his own jewelry. He was doing nothing. He was just selling jewelry. Wow. And he was selling jewelry rapidly. He was making jewelry for rappers. But he so, said I'm making no Jacob the jeweler watches. No, not, no, not in the time. No, he wasn't. Oh, right. No, right. I remember I remember I mean, first, I mean that's what blew him up, the watches. Uh, I want to say the Or the chains. The rappers yeah, blew yeah. him up. Okay. But he was doing stuff for jewelry. So he was making jewelry already, but he didn't have the watch yet. Right. He okay, gotcha, have, gotcha. Right, he, but he, they he, would say his name all the time because he was the go-to cat. Yes. And that's was, advertising. That's, that's marketing. Right. He the, he's the go-to cat. So your question's gonna, gonna blow up. Yeah. I mean, I used to work when I first started here, I worked on the same floor as Fubu. Oh yeah! Wow. With the what I did with Google uh, used to be in Empire State Building. Google used to be on the sixth sixth floor in the Empire wow. State Building. I'm not gonna talk anything else. He yeah. listen. I he's a sample that I look up to because I've seen where he started from. You said who? Um, Jacob the Jeweler. I see oh, yeah. where he started from yeah, as, yeah. as an immigrant. You know, in the diamond business, doing his shit. Yeah, and still know? making and it. And then now he's like he went from a booth on 47th Street to fucking stores in Dubai, to a store on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> yes. That's big in a matter of a short period of time. To a global name. To a global name within probably 20 years? Yeah. 20 years ago, you didn't hear about Jake Bajula. You heard him in that back. You heard him in the video, but he didn't have the watches back then. Right, right, right. Like the watches, he has, he's selling million dollar watches. Yeah. You know, somebody, I saw him in another video. Yeah, I got it from Jacob for $8 million. And, I'm like, what? And they're like intricate as... Intricate. Yeah, what? and they're truly art pieces. Right, and, and I tell people, I'm like... I always tell people when, when when I started to do my line and I started to price my shit and I started to say my wife go babe but that's kind of high I go it ain't for you mm. I go it's just not for you you want to go to Tiffany you got to pay Tiffany prices mm -hmm. you want to go to Harry Winston yeah well, you listen they they don't have prices in the catalogs yeah you you don't have Harry Winston money don't walk in there right you, you, this ain't for you I'm in the process of trying to get a um, trademark I this is my piece. Fuck yeah, I'm selling my piece for the price I want to sell my piece. Why? No one has this. Yeah. And you have 25, 30 years of practice. Right. You know, all this stuff. And it's something that people got to understand. It's like, it's like art. 
if I make this is my artwork, like I, I'm I'm selling my pieces yeah. that I did. So when I started this journey to do to go on my own, it's because why not? Mm -hmm. But I never seen that. Like I see this immigrant, this I want to say he's I don't know if he's Jewish or Russian Jew. I'm not sure what Jacob is. But I see him, like his growth within 20, 30 years from a guy owning a booth on 47th Street to dealing with celebrities to now your own brand and your own image around the fucking world. Wow. Within a short period of time. I want to say within 30 years. Like he, he I mean, you can, have a, you can have a booth on 47th Street. They all do and they all sell to celebrities on 47th Street. Yeah, and then some of them become pretty like Mr. Flawless yeah. and all those so guys. They're all, they all there, yeah. but, 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 but those guys are still on 47th Street. This yeah. guy's worldwide now. Why is he worldwide? How did he get to worldwide? And so the last question I have for you is professionally mm -hmm. and personally, what has been the most important lesson you've learned so far? So far, it may sound like a really, really simple answer is just be, be yourself, be honest who you are, regardless of what it is. We all wear masks. We all have a, 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 a wearing masks depending on your scenario, depending on where you're sitting at, what table you're at, you know, mm -hmm. what room you're in, who you're talking to. You know, we all put on a facade of, hey, I'm hanging out back in the hood. I got to change my yeah. the way I talk, the way I act, the way I am. I'm hanging out with a whole bunch of suits. I got to change the way I talk. And, and I'm at a point where I got tattoos where I'm like, you know what? I don't care anymore. Right, right. I go, why does my, my parents should, shouldn't judge me on, on, on what I do for a living? You know, whether it be selling a, 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 a $5 chain or a $100 diamond. Or because I have tattoos or I'm not in a suit, like, you shouldn't judge me by the way I look for the job that I do. Right. So, in the beginning, I was very conscious of that. But then I said, you know, be true to yourself. Like, why, why are you trying to be, like, fit in when just be you? And if you could fit in, you fit in. If you don't, fucking don't. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. But, you know, it's... it's it's when I started my own, it's my own business. It was just, you got to be genuine. Like, and everyone's telling me, like, I have to, you got, you got to start. My wife said, you need to start putting your face out there more. Yeah, and what, tell us the name of your business. Oh, it's Peter Feliciano uh, Fine Jewelry. Okay. Um, um, but it's, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm that person where I, I don't, I love to talk, but I hate to talk. Yeah. Like, you know, like my wife saying, you need to talk on these videos now. You need to, like, put... They want to see you. Like, if you want people to know who you are, they need to see you. They need to hear you talk. They need to hear yeah. your knowledge. Yeah. You know, not, not typing and putting pictures. You know, they want to see no. you. Yeah, the wealth of knowledge just alone, alone that we got from just nerding out about diamonds. Uh -huh. it just... It's like any other business. Is, is, is if, you, if you dig in, you, you can find the good, the bad, and the ugly in this yeah. business. You know? And I, I'm, I'm grateful that you, you know, just shared it all. Yeah, no, I mean, that's... But that's how else can I be? It's like to. It's like if I'm gonna. If you want to deal with me, is I'm gonna lay it on the table. Right. Because I I I don't want you to think you have to buy from me. Whether whether someone says, Pete. Someone said you should I mean, listen. And for real, this is my last. Question. I know. Yeah. All right. So what is the key to sales? Like, what is the secret sauce to sales? Man, I am. That's tough. Um, sales is. I would say marketing. I would say originality. Um, I don't see it as a sale. Okay. I, I don't like to see things as sales because you want to buy something and I don't want to sell you nothing. I want to educate you first. Mm. Because, because that what, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just educating you. Like I, I want you to be comfortable in buying what you're about to spend your money on. Yeah. And I don't want to try to sell you something without you even knowing what you're buying. Right. So my first question is, you know what you're doing. You know what you're looking for. Have you shopped around? Right. Because some people have no idea what they're doing. And I've doubled it all the time. The friend, I'm like, you need to make phone calls. Just do this. Let me tell you. I'll, I'll email you. Let me email you what to do, what to say, what to say. Uh -huh. One question, ask this. Look for this. Make sure this, this, this. Make sure you get a copy of this. Send me a copy. I'll let you know if it's a good deal or not. Ah, okay. Because if, if you don't do that, it's not worth it. Yeah. Because then all you're trying to do is, is sell someone a diamond. And you have a million people selling you a diamond. You could, anybody wants to sell you. I just want to teach you how to buy a diamond. And that, in return. And in return, if you come to me, you come to me. If you don't, you don't. But I'm going to tell you that with this company, company offer is, you know, an establishment since 1931. Right. We've been in the building since 1931. 
We're not a pop-up store. Right. We, have, we, you know, we, we haven't been here for five years. We ain't just moved from now. We, we, we've been here for a real long time, so it's something you could trust, yes. you know, which is, which is key. Like, I, I, when, when we had a couple of sales that the packages uh, didn't get there, so I told my wife, I said, oh, my God. No, it was a, it, it was a, it was a, it was a, one of my other pieces. It was like four or five hundred bucks. I was like, I said, we're gonna FedEx her another piece tomorrow. And she said, let me. She said to me, she goes, no, no, I, I'm sorry, we didn't get the package. I'll buy another piece. So no, 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 you don't gotta buy another piece. You don't gotta buy another piece. I will make another piece. Don't worry about it. Wow. I go, this is not your fault. Don't worry about it. I will FedEx it to you. Now I'll take the loss. I don't mind taking the loss. Package found. I got it back. But. This is not her fault. Right. But yeah. the customer service is through the roof. It's through the roof. Because right. I, because I could lose this money, but I could gain a customer. I could gain someone that says, you got to go to Pete. And I've done that a couple of times. And I give away stuff to that. And I do it all the time because sales is, it, it, it's, it's, when it comes to this business, is different. But when it comes to my business is, I'm making, I'm, I'm not physically making, but I'm designing these pieces. Yeah. And like right now, me and my wife says, somebody's wearing our piece. Like the piece we designed, someone's wearing it. Like right now, you go, we have uh, 80 sun sales that we just started, but it's like, but but we have 88 people wearing <laughs> yeah. whatever, what we designed. Yeah, you know? Eight, right. So right. it's like that I take that, I take that seriously. So I always say I'm not looking for someone. I I I want someone to buy my piece. You know, I want to say, I want this. Like, I'm going to pee because I want this. Gotcha. You know, I, I'm not going to pee say, hey, I got to convince you what I have, you know. Yeah. So I'm more of, of, especially with my line of jewelry is, I just want to keep it very, very, uh, uh, I want to be keep it cultural. Mm -hmm. Because there's not a lot of representation out there. Um, with my pieces, I want people to make it like, a, like an heirloom, like like a heirloom. Yeah, heirloom, you pass heirloom. it down. Yeah, heirloom. Yeah, you pass it down, yeah. like. Um, you know, like like these. This is the intricate piece. Like this is no one makes this ring. Mm. No one in the world makes this ring. No one makes this design here. This the symbol. Yes, that people make it all over all over the internet. But this and this, no one makes it right at all. There's no one on the web that makes this. So you know, this is my piece. Yeah, my design. But I want somebody. I you, you want to say like, if someone comes. Yeah, hey, you want to. So why should I buy your ring? Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna tell you why it's my ring. Right, right, right. That's you a, know. I'm like, yeah. this is this is my ring. But when it comes to my nine to five job, you know, when it comes to sales, I again, it's I will educate you. Yes, education is the best form because you you're putting a person at ease because you you're not telling them you want their money. Right. You're not telling. Say, I'm, I'm here to I'm here to make yeah. you to make your best decision for you. Maybe you come back to me and buy from me because I have a sixty day money back guarantee. Or better yet, my price may be a tad higher. But does he have a lifetime upgrade? Oh, what, what do you mean by lifetime upgrade? Oh, you buy a diamond from Empire Diamond for five thousand dollars. Ten years down the line, you could hey, I'm gonna get a bigger diamond. You pay five thousand dollars. I'm say, hey, give me that diamond back. I'm gonna give you five thousand dollars credit for your diamond on exactly what you pay for towards your upgrade. Who Sheep. does that? Nobody. Wow. So those little things, my price may be higher, but take to the fact that I'm offered at the at the back end. I'm offering you a, a lifetime upgrade on your diamond. There you go. So now you started as a, I, 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 have, I have two doctors that, that bought a diamond from us uh, when they were in medical school. They have two practices, two cancer practices right now. She wanted, I made her the freaking um, the necklace uh, from Pretty Woman, the ruby heart necklace. I made her that necklace. Wow. You know, and she bought, she bought diamonds, big diamond, upgraded her stones. It's, 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 it's just being honest with someone and, and just doing what they want. You know, it's not... It's just not being pushy. I see pushy people. You go to 47th Street. Yeah, yeah. Hey, why you want this? Hey, why you want that? Right. How much is five dollars? You walk out. Oh, I drop it down to thirty five hundred. Well, 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 why you say that in the first place? <laughs> you know because why? Yeah. Because, because, because when you hear that, yeah, you, I hear scam. Oh, okay, gotcha. Like uh, someone wants to. I think it was Ali. No, one of them wants to buy a Cuban chain. I go, dude. What's the weight? What's this? What's that? I told him. I go. If you telling me what's real. I said, tell the guy that you wanted to check with a laser gun because sometimes they make these, uh, they make these gold chain with a less carat instead of fourteen is thirteen. Yeah. But you're solving so much weight. That's a big difference. Yeah. So I said, you know, uh, make sure they have they have a laser gun now where you could shoot a laser into gold and it will tell you the carat weight. Mm. And that's the, like the best way to do it. So I was like, I'm like, dude, get this chain. He told me. He told me the price. Get it. Get it. Get it. Because I can't find a price that way. I ain't had a problem doing it. He bought the chain. Incredible. I'm, I, I can't do it. 
<laughs> I, I, I'm like, I can't. I go, but I'm telling you right now, that deal, and he said that nah, the guy wanted to move it. Some people just need to move merchandise and, mm. that, and that they're willing to take get a, a hit. Get a good deal, yeah. You know? That's what he did. Yeah. Some, some people will sit on it and say, I don't need to get a hit because I have good business. I sell it when I sell it. Right, right, you right. You know, so, so it, it, it's, I, I could be a really That's good That's why deal. you shop around. That's you shop around. You have to. Because then now when you come back to me, you know, you, 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 you bought a diamond or you bought whatever for me and you, and you walk down Jamaica and you go to the store like, oh, I could have got this shit for this. Right. Damn, you know, Pete freaking ripped me off. No, 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 no. You rip yourself off. <laughs> I ain't ripping you off. You didn't do the homework I tell you to do. Right, right, you right. Know, I'm not ripping you off. I'm telling you, compare apples to apples and let's, and let's, and let's, and let's, and let's travel down this road together. Right. And, we, and maybe we do business and maybe we don't. But you know what? I have, I have a client as a friend now. And if you need anything, just give me a contact and stuff. That's better than not having a, a, a client at all. You know. Well, Pete, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your time. I can't tell you how much I yeah. appreciate this. <laughs> this has been excellent. Like, this is awesome. I like it. Thank you. I like the fact that you just go off. <laughs> yeah, I don't care, man. It's, it's life, man. Life is short, man. I, I, I've been through too much in life, man. Yeah. You, know, you have to just try everything you could try. Experience life, man. It's, it's a beautiful thing. And yesterday is past. It's, it's gone. It's nothing you got right now. It, Today is the day and, yeah. and plan for tomorrow. And we are, and that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Let me grab that mic, brother. Right.